D do you hear the voices in your head of the uh, actors you know are going to play a part? Oh, or no, have you ever been no. in that position? Have you ever known that you were Once. writing for, say, George Burns? No, no. Only, no, George... That would be the last example, one, because he was, he was the not, the, right. not the but original the one. The only time I ever did it was for uh, The Goodbye Girl, for Richard Dreyfuss and for Marsha Mason. Oh, sure. For those who don't know m about my married life. Yeah. Uh, but no, I never do, because uh, I must think of them as characters, as living people, because I am always writing about somebody I know about. Mm -hmm. The casting comes later on. So the part played by Walter Matthau was really in your head as it came into the typewriter, your neighbor in Queens or whatever. Uh, which former. one are you talking about? Oh, I, I was just making up an example, oh. but I mean, y do, do you hear that sourced character oh. in your uh, head? Absolutely, absolutely. In dialect uh, and wh or whatever. Uh, for example, The Sunshine Boys, in which Walter played the film, was based on a number of old vaudevillians. Uh, Joe Smith of Smith and Dale um, is one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Willie Howard of Eugene and Willie Howard. Uh, there was even a little bit of the Ritz Brothers in there. They were all old comics, and I had met them all when I was a young kid uh, growing up in New York and going to see whatever comedian there was. Mm -hmm. uh, so they all were in my mind, and Walter you know, came last. Yeah. Although Walter did come in the middle of The Odd Couple because I had written two acts of The Odd Couple. I had not finished the third act, but I met Walter at a, at a party. Walter was not yet a star, and uh, I had seen him do Guys and Dolls at the city center and thought he was brilliant, and also mm -hmm. saw him do an occasional television show. But I, I saw him at this party, and I said, I'm doing a play for you. I want you to do this play next year. And he said, when you finish it, send it to me. And I did. He read it, and he called me back, and he said, I love it. I want to do it, but I want to do Felix Unger. I don't want to do Oscar. You had him in mind as the other character. As Oscar. Sure. Oscar is, you know, yeah. who Oscar is. Yeah. Well, that's the one I wanted him to play, obviously. Yeah. He wanted to play Felix. I said, why? He said, Oscar's too easy for me. He said, I could phone in Oscar. He said, I want to act. So I said, <laughs> act in somebody else's play. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he would like to have played the, the fastidious man because yes. it's against type. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, could he have done it? He did it one day on a television show. Uh, we were on a show together, and we had talked about this, and he said, I always wanted to play Felix. I said, okay, let's do it. So I had the book, and I read Oscar, and he read Felix, and I said, you see, I was right. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. Did it occur to you to ask Robert Redford to do this most recent play before you had anyone else in mind? Which? They're playing our song? Yeah. I don't think he sings. Does he? He may, I don't know, but he, he, people tend to forget that he was a, a Neil Simon actor, both on the stage and on the screen yes, at one point. Yes, in Barefoot in the Park. No, it And people always want to say, if you'd only seen Redford do one of those Broadway comedies, you don't get that. It, you don't he doesn't get, get a it. chance to show that off but in I the know, films. I know that he wants to do one again. Mm -hmm. And uh, who knows, it may happen. Uh, as a matter of fact, he was there at the show last night, and he yeah. seemed to enjoy it very much, and uh, we talked about it, and uh, I would like to write one for him. Redford wasn't there last night, because I was. I confuse you so, the <laughs> two of you. Because <laughs> casting people do, too, all the time. Yeah. You notice that? W was he actually there? Actually, in person. Uh, I was there and seemed to enjoy myself, uh, too. Yes. I notice you take, you take the word you scene. You were the one without the crowd around you, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do that. I, I create a distraction for him <laughs> by repelling people, right. you see. Right. Uh, can you say, Neil, what, what uh, looking back at your blockbuster successes, as opposed to those that have only, say, been <laughs> successes. Uh, what the ones have in common that were the big winners? Um, I would guess... Uh, Goodbye Girl, for example, in film. A, a strong identity with the audience. The ones that, that seem too exotic, too removed from them, for example, God's Favorite or, or The Good Doctor, um, those are exercises in playwriting and, and something that I get off on, but uh, not necessarily the audience. But the things that they can relate to, when they come up to me outside and say, that's my life, or that's my uncle, that's my grandfather, that, that was me. Um, mm -hmm. I've had, had women come up to me about the, uh, the odd couple and say, that's my life. Uh, because obviously two women living together are going to go through the same circumstances. Yeah. So I think that's the common denominator in, in the most successful pieces. People are always urging you to get a little more serious and a little more serious. And uh, do you have an, an interiors, uh, <coughs> uh, referring to Woody's no, movie? No, I love. I thought I met Woody recently and told him how much I loved that. I thought it was super work, and I I wish I could do that. Uh, I've attempted serious pieces, uh, the Gingerbread Lady for one, but I think in a sense, 
most of the good plays, at least the latter plays, are serious. Certainly Prisoner of Second Avenue and, and Chapter Two are serious plays. But in my own life, there's a great deal of humor. Um, I n neither see life as all tragic or all humor. And so mm -hmm. I try to get both of them into the play. Uh, Woody consciously left out all of the humor in Interiors. Had I written it, I would have put in humor and probably, probably would not have been as successful as he was. Yes, you would have to keep fighting back the, uh, the obvious places where you, you knew you could get a laugh by the elaborate uh, well, it's construction of... Well, it's so tricky that sometimes I write something that I don't even mean to be funny, and it comes out funny. Uh, there, there's something about really? the situation, yeah. Y do you mean by that that you'll hear a single line get a laugh that you didn't know was a laugh line in a play, or, or, or a whole scene will be funny um, that you thought was not? Well, for example, in... This may not be a good example, but in Plaza Suite, we were out of town, and the first, the first playlet, one-act play, was about a, a husband and wife who were married for 23 years, and uh, they go back to the Plaza Hotel. Uh, she's trying to recreate the evening of their, of their honeymoon because their marriage is falling apart, mm -hmm. and she wants to revitalize it. Uh, there was a great deal of humor in the beginning, but as they start to get into the confrontation of why their marriage is falling apart, um, Mike Nichols and myself wanted the play to become more serious. Uh, it was, it was quite moving, but they were laughing at a lot of moments. So Mike mm. said to me, let's take out all of the laughs in that section because it's, it's hurting what it is that we want to accomplish. We took out all the laughs and the audience found other places to laugh at that we did not even mean because there's something in the atmosphere, I guess, in, in the scene which I created uh, that was humorous. Mm -hmm. So that, that balance is, is a very delicate one. Yeah. Are there any comics you'd never work for again? <laughs> uh, comics? Uh-huh. You wrote in I, the old days for most of the biggies, I think. Well, I mean, that's... I did not enjoy working for Jackie Gleason. I admire him. That surprises me. Uh, well, I worked very briefly for him, and I don't think uh, my brother and I were too successful with Jackie. Uh, there were a lot of comedians I did not enjoy working with, but... Um, that doesn't he value I the just, written word, no? Oh, he's terrific, and his yeah. writers were wonderful. And I mean, the honeymoon the shows, I watch it and love it. Mm -hmm. But it's something that I, I just was not able to do. I guess it's the sound of uh, my rhythms are not the same as Jackie's. Mm -hmm. Maybe today would be different. He's, he's quite a different performer. I really enjoyed him in uh, uh, Smokey and the Bandit, which I've seen on the plane every time I go to California. <laughs> yeah. He's a wonderful conversationalist. Oh, uh, I, know. I wish I'd I know. done more of this yeah. sort of thing with him. Yeah. In fact, I hope to. Harper was another one I don't think I'd like to write. My dialogue never went well with Harper. <laughs> I don't know why. He mispronounced the words. Uh, yes, he? Marcel yes. Marceau, another one. Died every time. Did you meet Harpo ever? No, I didn't. Everybody I loved I him. It's, I'm so I sorry did. I didn't meet him. Uh, I had a chance to once, and something else seemed more important. Now I can't remember yeah. what the other thing was. You ever have that experience? Yes. 